What is going on guys? We are back with another video today. We're doing another realistic style rebuild. I'm Madden22 and today is of the New York Giants who of course had two top 10 draft picks, 5 and 7. And for once, I would say most Giants fans can agree, they didn't mess it up. They actually went with some really talented and really highly uh, regarded draft picks. Not like, you know, a guy that's really, I mean, anyone you could take a risk on, I suppose. Like, you know, Trevon Walker is a really big risk for Jacksonville. But, you know, it's, it's a draft as far as as predictably good as you can get. The Giants did exactly what they needed to. They could have even went with two linemen, which would have been a little excessive, but, you know, that's where a lot of the quote-unquote excuses for the offense goes is the offensive line. But Evan Neal, obviously an amazing pick. Superstar of element trade should come out and just look great out the gate. Maybe not great, but, you know, he should look good. He should look like a, you know, a pro, you know, right out the gate. Same with Thibodeau, of course, you know, more pro-ready, if you will, than Trayvon Walker. I really kind of regret letting the, uh, you know, the roster that I downloaded dictate that decision. Probably doesn't matter too much, but yeah, Trayvon Walker should not have been superstar. I should have probably had him like a 72-73 overall. You could probably argue uh, Thibodeau should be a little bit higher, so I'll probably make him a 76 as well. But obviously, super athletic. Both guys get superstar. It's clear-cut. It's super fair. Talking about some of the guys that aren't rookies, we obviously know about those guys. And we can also talk about Wandale Robinson. I personally don't know if I would give him star, but the reason why I technically gave him star is because I'm trying to predict what EA is going to do. He's a second round player that has that gadget, like X Factor ish type of, uh, you know, build. So when you think of guys like Tariq Cohen, you know, when superstars were just coming into the game, he got like a superstar dev, despite him being like really low of an overall. So when you think of potential, you think of, you know, development, what he can do with the football. I think that's why I'm going to give him star development right here. I will say from the Giants standpoint, I don't understand the draft pick trying to make it as easy as possible for Daniel Jones. But at this point, I just think it's like, as the Giants organization, specifically like the higher ups, like the way higher ups, the guys that are, you know, quote unquote safe ish, uh, and the fans go, you absolutely are hoping your team tanks next season. Like you are hoping that Daniel Jones, just Daniel Jones is it. Cause he just doesn't seem to be the guy they brought in Tyrod Taylor. Wouldn't even surprise me if he ends up starting Tyrod Taylor seems to have been good. You know, he's been a good player for pretty much every team he's played for, but injuries have you know, held him back as well, which speaking of injuries, a lot of injuries on this Giants team, but Saquon Barkley, probably the first name you think of when you're thinking of injuries, a guy that just hasn't necessarily been the same since that huge uh, injury that he had, but also playing behind a pretty rough offensive line. They had their moments, but outside of Andrew Thomas, who really is, should be a higher overall than this. I mean, a lot higher, like 79 bare minimum, but I don't want to go around changing every overall and all that. Uh, you know, it really wasn't a great offensive line. So we'll see what happens at Barkley. Same with Galladay. For the money they paid him, he just really did not look great. But Dan Jones isn't really necessarily known for being a guy to get the best out of his receivers. Darius Slayton, a guy that I'm hoping to develop because he's 24 years old. A guy that maybe even could be on the way out. I know they're thinking about trading him, I thought at least. Um, you know, there's, I mean, what name hasn't been other than Galladay? Hasn't been linked to some sort of trade. I know Kadarius Tony was hugely uh, linked to a trade. Sterling Shepard, nobody really wanted him, I don't think. So instead of just releasing him, they restructured him, I believe. Of course, we know about Evan Ingram going away, obviously. Aziz was actually not a bad rookie. Not a bad rookie at all. A Dory Jackson, vastly underrated here as well. A, a pretty solid corner. James Bradbury. I know the, the cap hit was huge, but... Losing him really does hurt this boundary team here. I mean, they really don't have a whole lot of good corners that can fill in for quote unquote James Bradbury because technically Adoree's filling in for him, and there's really no one there at the number two spot. But you know, maybe Flot can develop, even though he's really undersized in the weight department. But I will say one thing's for sure uh, going forward: whether we get a really top pick for a quarterback or not, I'm really aiming to make this a four-three team again as. I mean, you just look at the way this looks. You put Leonard Williams and uh, Dexter Lawrence at number one and two DT. You put these two guys on the outside, and your freaking edge, your your D line is set. You know, the Giants haven't always or really ever been a team that even values linebackers. You know, coverage linebackers, if you will, too much. Uh, McFadden's kind of a decent blitzer, 
Uh, you know, it's it's just a team that needs their front to do well. And I don't know if all this like hybrid 3-4 crap is really going to work for them. Just get your four guys down there and let them win their matchups. That's probably what we're going to be looking to do. I ain't going to lie. Everyone with their shadow heads. Uh, but of course, uh, I'm also not going to lie. Uh, why did I even click this actually? But also not going to lie about it being that time of the year for Madden. Just being down really would appreciate you know it would really <laughs> i'd really appreciate it if maybe if you find this video good you know halfway through near the end whatever it is if you find it good maybe let me know by leaving a like maybe subscribe if you're new if you're not new absolutely appreciate the continued support we obviously do a ton of franchise stuff on the channel so if that's your kind of thing you like uh a good time a little a little fun a little bit of jokes here and there you know, wait, wait, wait one second. I had one. I was going to release a guy, and I decided not to because I, I, I had a joke. One sec. I'm not going to keep him. He's gone -o. For the few of you that are still here after that, we have Dexter Lawrence getting one of two for the camp breakout completed. Of course, meaning 10K XP and a chance for Superstar. Not having a good start of the season, but damn, no Superstar dev, but still 10K XP is great. At 0-3, I don't know if I want to check in on the quarterback, but I suppose I will. I'm sure it's going to go great going up against the Saints. We'll definitely turn it around this week. 3-0 versus 0-3. We, we have this in the bag. We lost by 7, of course. A bit better than losing 38-3 to against Washington, but, it's, you know, a loss is a loss, unfortunately. I also sounded like a train horn. Now, we didn't get it, so usually I don't show these, but... I decided to because Leonard Williams is probably the oldest player that I can think of that we've gotten a breakout offered to, right? I mean, is he 26, 27 here? It's pretty old. And as someone who's going to be 27 in July, I, I feel great about saying that out loud. We have won our first game. We are at nine games in. We have one win. The turnaround starts now. So Matt Breida, a guy that uh, I love in Madden, obviously. If you guys watch our Niner series we had some time ago, a super fun player and win healthy, a bit of a difference maker, a bit of a game changer, but it's a problem. Always injured, which kind of gets me thinking, like, I know it's a cheap deal anyways, but why sign a guy that's injury prone when you have injury issues? Of course Matt Breida would get a speed upgrade. He clearly needs more of that, but... I mean, unless he's doing something spe spectacular, I mean, you can kind of just go for a new running back every year, and he really isn't, unfortunately. Now, this is a surprising one. Darnay Holmes is now a superstar of elementary corner who's really built for the slot, but with the dev and the XP and all that, maybe our future starting number two. The playoffs time and the team was kind of disappointing me because they started winning games. <laughs> of course, I don't want that. Uh, as far as, you know, this team goes, they just need a new quarterback. This is a great year to go for a quarterback. I don't want it to just become a Bryce Young or CJ Stroud rebuild. And I know I say that a lot, but there's really no choice in the matter. If you get a top two pick and you're a team with a quarterback need, you got to take one. I mean, what are you supposed to do? Oh, I, I'll take Will Anderson. We have two star plus dev young edge rushers that'll make sense you know it's just why would i do that of course daniel jones you i mean for the giants fans for the the organization they'd be like whoa he did well but this is awful for madden i mean this is probably like the 32nd quarterback if you add all the things together completion percentage yards touchdown to pick touchdowns in general and passer rating overall i mean you probably just look at passer rating as that thing but Saquon Barkley, 1,500 yards, 4.4 yards per carry with 12 touchdowns. Darius Slayton, not quite 1,000, but still a good season. Kenny Galladay, 10 touchdowns. Would love to see him get back to superstar, but that's an okay year. 831 uh, yards with Kadarius Toney at 816. Bellinger with uh, 565. And then, of course, Barkley at 437. A really good season for Barker. Uh, Barker? Barkley. Of course, Bellinger uh, with a... Um, you know, okay season considering, you know, this team is likely going to not look to the tight end position much at all. Of course, the left guard was awful, but Neal was amazing with only four sacks allowed. That's actually really good. Sack totals, Thibodeau, of course, seven sacks. Led the team. I would have loved to see more from other players, but can't really win them all. Blake Martinez, okay season. He's always been a tackle guy. Darnay Holmes over 100 yards. McKinney over 100, 
tackles, over 100 tackles. McFadden was okay. Kicking, Graham Gano. No, please, Graham Gano. Thank you. Do better. Uh, 14 of 19, which is really bad for him. Uh, Gillian, not bad. You know, we gave him a four-year 10. Gillian with the 53 point, uh, you know, pretty much O oh, punt yards per, well, punt. Wandale Robinson playing the punt in kick return game. Did okay in kick return. Got a touchdown in punt return. Uh, trying to utilize him more, but, I mean, he got a lot of wide receivers to feed and James Winston MVP. All right. And, you know, when you're looking at this team, probably looking to get rid of what is going on here. Got some random names coming out of the woodwork. Okay. But, yeah, probably looking to let go of Sterling Shepard, who I think in real life got some sort of restructured contract rather than getting released. So I think we can get rid of him next season and, that's probably going to be our move. The Packers versus the Steelers in a Super Bowl rematch. And the Packers win that one as well. I'm not saying I would like to see it, but it's something. <laughs> of course, looking at any potential dev ups we had, I would not have expected any on offense. And luckily for us, our expectations were met, I suppose. Defensively, I mean, I'm trying to think of anyone. Oh, wait. Wait, oh wait, do I ever... Oh, crap. I thought I took off regressions. This is literally the first time I've ever messed this up, so... This is gonna be a fun process. Luckily for us, we're so bad that... It's probably unlikely we would've got a dev up anyways, but... Maybe Barkley, perhaps, would've been one of those guys? And... Fortunately, no, he did not go up in dev. I will check Daniel Jones, because he was okay enough to maybe get to star. Was not. Star is like... You know, super easy to get, so it wouldn't have surprised me. Bellinger, I don't think, would have gotten a dev up. He was just not a great... I mean, he was good enough. You know, it's kind of like a, a fill-in, kind of just good enough type of situation. Leonard Williams at normal is brutal to watch. Uh, of course, normal development chain will fix that. Uh, was Darnay Holmes good enough to get to Superstar? I think we looked at that already. Obviously, dropped in dev, but this is why you turn off dev regression, because... I mean, <laughs> you just have all these guys dropping in dev when they probably don't deserve to. So you have $42 million to spend, of course. This is a team that is looking to be grabbing a quarterback that could come in and just dominate like we've seen a lot of rookie quarterbacks or younger quarterbacks as of late. Uh, so definitely a team that you're thinking of not really win now, but maybe the next two seasons perhaps. So you obviously don't want to sign a guy like Gronk. But maybe you sign a guy like, can I find any example, like, you know, a Ronnie Harrison or somebody that's like 27 perhaps you can get away with. But going to be honest, uh, you know, I'm not really seeing a whole lot here. Jam Brown could actually, you know, we need multiple linebackers. Jam Brown wouldn't be the worst name to add. A, I know the Giants don't really prioritize that position too highly, but it would still be decent. DJ Reed, if he was actually available to be picked up, that would be a great one, but kind of isn't. So we offered a few contracts. The biggest one, obviously, Jayon, if we are to move to a 4-3 again. And we receive Jayon Brown and Kalen Balaj. We only have two running backs on the roster now after Kalen Balaj was like a 3-year 11. And I think Jam was like a 3-year 24, which, I mean, a little costly for both of them, to be honest. But at least they should be young enough and, you know, decent enough to be good contributors for the next several seasons. Fifth year options. <laughs> Unless he wants to play running back, I don't think so. Daniel Jones, the running back. No, thank you. Another fifth-year option. This is Dexter Lawrence, as expected. He is going to be a costly name. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to give him the option. I was going to re-sign him, but he's, he's 89 over already anyway, so might as well try to cheap him up for now. Actually, we probably should have, you know, we, we're, eh, it doesn't matter. We're going to have a youngster quarterback. It shouldn't have cost us too much anyways. All right, I didn't even actually know what pick we had, and pick two appears to be that pick. Are the Houston Texans going to end up taking quarterback? They probably will, even with Davis Mills, and it's Bryce Young. Now, I don't really have a preference. I think right now it's, I think, slightly in favor of Bryce Young in real life, like we said, but Stroud, QB1, QB2, you can't really go wrong with either one, so CJ Stroud is going to be the choice. And the new era in New York has begun. And in this draft pick, we're going to be trading 35, 99, and 131 to the Panthers for 26, in which we are likely to be taking the right guard, Matthew Jones. 
Uh, our next draft pick is in the third round, which isn't something I prefer, but this Jones fella, I mean, I wasn't even going to grab him, but he's here still. Want to do great. We need a guard. We need everything. We're going to grab him. Hit him development trait. Could have maybe went for the center high second instead. I mean, pick your poison. It's really about just getting talent, specifically on the offensive line. I was also thinking about going for a Gilbert as well. I was waiting for Michael Mayer, but I, I think even though he went in 21 to the Broncos in this one, I think it was kind of unrealistic. I think he's like a top 10 projected at the moment, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't looked in a while. Uh, I don't even remember if that's what I've seen in the first place, but still some pretty good players here. But we, uh, I don't know what I'm going to go with next. So we're going to trade up 10 spots with the Jets using a 6th round this year and a 5th round next year. Which is pretty much where we traded up last time in the last round at least. Still giving ourselves decent draft picks. We have pick 6 in the 4th and probably not a whole lot going after that. But uh, ooh, some really solid players here. Jack Campbell was likely going to be my pick. But I see some other good players still remaining. Uh, you know, I thought I saw a lineman. Did I? Broker. Uh, McClendon, I think, was actually pretty decent. Uh, 30 reps is kind of rough, but eh, maybe not so much. <laughs> maybe not so great after all. But yeah, screw it. I think I'm going to go Jack Campbell. This is kind of, and I was training up for a linebacker here for sure. Just didn't know which one. And I mean, he looks decent enough. Jack Campbell, welcome to the squad. Hidden development rate, 85 speed, 87 XL. Massive player. And I mean, I think our linebacking group is kind of set. So now the choices are between Nestor, who looks decent in the, the pro day, but that D pass block scares the hell out of me, or Putnam, who has a couple of Bs, a little bit worse in the pro day, but I think has already sold himself on me, and hidden development trait for this guy as well, kind of fixing the offensive line in one year. And I will say, for the most part, I mean, to my knowledge, we drafted a new guy here. I'm pretty sure. Don't think we've ever had him in this uh, draft class, which, if that's the case, is pretty clutch. Try to add to that. Oh, maybe not. I was going to grab him just because he's new, but nah, dude. Nah, 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 not doing that. He's 24. I can't be doing that. Jack Stanine. Sure, screw it. Jack Stanine, welcome. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with what we drafted. Really didn't cost ourselves too much next year. The, the trade value is fair on the trade calculator. It was fair in game of course as they accepted it i accidentally clicked this my bad his zone coverage sucks but i suppose if you're going to be a true number two man coverage over zone any day of the week and yeah i mean was going to look at cornerback as our number one need besides quarterback in this one but darnay holmes kind of entered himself into the conversation and kind of saved us that position a little bit of course 78 overall 72 75 70 and 66 overall i think everyone but the fullback is day one starters to be honest so Stroud I'd imagine I think he's superstar right I and we've seen him a couple of times now but you know I don't always remember you know leave me alone okay I think star star probably and I can't imagine this guy's higher than star there's trade Sterling Shepard two sevenths for 104 from the Patriots and a backup running back damn running back's name sounded like some rare material in one of those superhero movies Dratanium or whatever the hell his name was Jesus that was Trey Daney. I don't know. I'm done. Ladaney Tomlinson. Hey, back-to-back here's a new player, though. Aziz Ojulari with one of two completed. I mean, it's at least XP, even if he doesn't get the second one. And just like Dexter Lawrence, he fails the second one. All right, negotiations. Who do we have to pay? Saquon Barkley, who's still a start of elementary player. Obviously, he's healthy in this realm. So a five-year, like, 75? Five year 80. Five year 80? Sounds good to me. It's totally fair, I think. Uh, Darius Slayton, a guy that uh, he's kind of like mid tier. You know, I think a four year 44 is pretty fair at 25. Uh, Julian Love, um, actually really underrated. I'm going to give him a five year 34. I just, I don't know, that number just kind of came into my head and I'm, I'm sticking with it because that's just the way I feel. You know, 30 mil left. But we're going to be getting rid of some quarterbacks soon. Daniel Jones is one of them. Blake Martina is going to be a bit old for my liking, so we're probably going to let him go. Zimenez, I mean, he's just a backup. Same with Ricky Seal Jones. Uh, you know, a lot of backup level talent. So, I mean, we got the guys we wanted to get. We're going to save some money. And once again, we added some, uh, re added some of our players for 
some years down the line. And Julian Love, speaking of, gets to star 20K, 20K, 20K. Close enough. Not really, it's like half, but it's still amazing. Then we have our next breakout, which is... Oh, yeah, I forgot we had to... <laughs> gotta figure out who it is before we do anything. And Aziz Ojulari is a superstar. We're actually kind of hitting some dev ups. Not bad. Headed to the playoffs, and we had a pretty damn good year. If you compare it to last year, still not that great at 8 and 9. Gotcha going. You thought, whoa, playoffs. That's cool. But no, no, but 8 and 9 is still a pretty good turnaround. Really unfortunate losses. Right at the end, we were 6 and 6, and they just lost three in a row. And. It was kind of just too late, or six, seven, and six. Some, something happened. There was a six involved. All right, that's all I can tell you. Looking at Stroud's rookie numbers, 33 touchdowns, nine interceptions, 44 in yards. Much better than Daniel Jones. Once again, he's a rookie. Rook, uh, rushing numbers, Barkley, technically worse than last year, but still a good season. Galladay, 12-63 uh, with 11 touchdowns, 12-57 with seven touchdowns for Slayton. Kadarius Tony with 7-7-8 with seven touchdowns. Bellinger with slightly more yards, and then Barkley with slightly less yards. Blocking, let's see how these numbers looked. Once again, Evan Neal, he's looking really good. You know, when you look at nine sacks compared to 19, I know right tackle, left tackle is a little bit different difficulty-wise, but in Madden, they don't really seem to care, to be honest. It's usually the tackles just sucking. Still a good season. Of course, looking at sack totals, you have uh, Thibodeau with nine. Jayon Brown apparently blitzing like madman with eight and a half. Eight for Ojulari, seven and a half for Leonard Williams, three for Dexter Lawrence. Of course, Jack Campbell looking like he had a pretty decent season. Picks were pretty low overall. Uh, kicking, once again, Graham Gano might have to Graham Gano off the team. Gillen with 53.7 or 53.8, so he pretty much with a whole yard extra per punt. And obviously looking at the numbers, we're like 30th, 31st. Of course, MVP went to Dak, and then number two, Zeke, so our division rivals. Love it, dude. Of course, looking at any other awards, anything, Stroud and Jack Campbell, actually. So, rookie awards there with Stroud at number five overall for quarterbacks. And, yeah, the Cowboys kind of just, like, ran away with all the awards. But we still had an okay season, once again. Coming off of pick two overall, drafted in the top five to drafted into, like, tens. No, I mean, okay, right? It's something. Some sort of progress. All right, Super Bowl between the Cowboys and the Ravens. The winner is, of course, the Cowboys that expected our division rivals, which kind of proves that we have a tougher task to the Super Bowl than most. Of course, looking at DevOps, it's probably a little late for Kenny Galladay, but he's 29 with Superstar. I almost kind of want to debatably force his, you know, force his overall up, but Slayton also Superstar, but I mean, even he, you know, the dev devs aren't looking like. You know, that deving chance. The overalls are a bit low. Of course, looking at the defensive side of things, Ojulari got his dev up during this season. And I believe Jayon and Campbell, I mean, I know for a fact Jayon is now superstar who wasn't. But of course, Campbell also superstar, unless he started with it, which would be, I was about to say, a little busted. But fair enough. Uh, some decent dev ups now. If I could choose who I would, uh, you know, have a dev up for, it would definitely be Leonard Williams. And also, I suppose, uh, Adoree Jackson, who is now a lower of an overall than Darnay Holmes, who is technically smaller. So we're going to keep Darnay at number two. And, I mean, it's working out, so what can you really say? So we need a new true number one middle linebacker. And outside of that, though, the defense is looking pretty damn primed. And then offense wouldn't hurt to add one more lineman, maybe a left guard. But I think Putnam's going to be the starting center. Jones is already the starting guard. I know they paid Glowinski a three-year 20, but at the end of the day, you draft someone with the same kind of talent out the gate and way younger with way more potential. You kind of have to start him in a rebuild. Of course, Kadarius Tony also sneakily getting up there in overall, 83 overall here. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much that. Obviously, we have a couple of upgrades we can use as well, which is nice. Go with, like, Field General. Why not? Of course, probably should change his number, but, I mean, it's not a terrible-looking number, I suppose. All right, so we have free agency. Elton Jenkins is here, a guy that, like I said, in real life probably is looked to be re-signed by Green Bay. A very talented guy, but kind of expensive. I would say, honestly, this would be, like, in real life, probably a three-year 60, maybe three-year 70 even. So I don't think I'm looking at doing that, to be honest. Davenport, we don't really need edge. We need interior more than anything, but even then, that's down the line, like a year from now maybe. 
So I'm not really sure there's anyone here worthy of our uh, signings. You know, Dory Jackson, even he's 27, still has a couple of years left in him. So, I mean, I think we're just looking to try to have another good draft. We need a middle linebacker. We have one from EA that could be decent. He looks really solid, in my opinion. Brady Williams. Uh, I mean, Darna Holmes is kind of the starter in corner now. And he, I mean, if we were to add Greedy, he would look like the most realistic slot, but... I don't want to do that, so yeah, I think we're just gonna gonna save some money and just draft again. I couldn't resist. I actually went for Ellen a three year sixty million dollar deal for him to be our starting, I would assume, left guard. It's not like this guy isn't terrible and he's you know he's drafted you know oh look at he's got that that Fortnite season whatever skin. I don't freaking know, but uh, of course it's not like he's bad per se, but he's kinda bad. Like he's a good power blocker, he's he's developing about as well as you could ask a normal development trait lineman to develop, but Alan Jenkins is just that much better in fairness. So we have fifth year options and uh, Andrew Thomas is wanting a contract. I'm going to say no because if we're going to resign him right now, based on the way he's playing, we could pretty much offer him no higher than 10 mil over like four years. You know, it's $40 million deal for a high overall left tackle who's not playing super well isn't the worst thing in the world. Once again, there's just no way to test it, so I, I'm not sure how, how to do it, but, you know, does having a decent overall player overwrite the amount of sacks they're allowing and just gives the team a better chance to win? Or do the sack totals, the sacks allowed, actually reflect how bad the player is? I, there's literally no way to test it, because if they're a good player and they're always giving up high sacks, but the team wins, like, you know, I don't know what to do. We have pick 16, and honestly, the highest pick I would probably even take someone at is like 20-something. So, unless we were to take a wide receiver, which is possible, because Kenny Galladay played well, but once again, it's that realism that we're just not having, uh, you know, it's just like, what do you do? You know, like, like a, do I boost Galladay's, like, overall? Because that's kind of the realistic thing to do here, but... I don't know what else to say, but Bart Stoudemire, I think, was a decent player. 4-4, decent agility and excel drills, but not really seeing him much here. I might boost uh, Galladay, to be honest. I wouldn't boost him by a ton, but maybe just boost him by, like, you know, maybe 86, 87 overall. Of course, McCullough's super speedy. I mean, I think the big thing I would be looking to draft is probably DT to replace uh, Leonard Williams. At least, you know, higher, like, first-round type. Of course, Stefan Gregory looks like a pretty good candidate for that as well. Kind of like a do-it-all player. You also have Givens, who has a B finesse, but, you know, he's not as good, but you're waiting to the second or third round. And you have some cornerbacks like Neighbors, who looks okay because of his athleticism, obviously. Uh, what else did we have? We had another guy, I think. Taquan Brewer, 3-4. to four. Once again, another guy with some athleticism. You're kind of betting on that athleticism more than anything, I will admit. But could also go with a tight end, Clemens. You know, the tight end that we have really hasn't developed super well. But Matthew Clemens looks like a guaranteed beast out the gate. I think it's going to be a trade down and maybe like a trade up. The Dolphins, see, if I take this trade, I think I get to actually use that second round next year for that value. But at the same time, the Colts are giving us like exactly what we want, like a this year thing too. So I'm going to take this. I think it's a little bit more fair as well. And with that pick, they actually steal the DT. I will admit, I never in a million years would have expected him to go that high. So, it is what it is. I mean, what am I supposed to do? But I might also be selling here with that tight end, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of a trade down, I suppose. Who's that? Osborne. Now, Clemens is still there. So, at the end of the day, that's not the worst sell in the world. Yeah, this Osborne guy is nowhere near as good as this Clemens guy. So... I think, wow, Steve Young, what a name. I think I'm just going to take Matthew Clemens, who looks like an absolute freakly athlete. Matthew Clemens is the choice. Hidden development trade, 87 speed, 91 excel, 85 change of direction at 6'6". Six six. Once again, I don't understand why they're, you know, like, you can be that good of an athlete, but your jumping is that bad. Like, that's really bad, EA. Come on, man. Of course, Richard Charles uh, looks a little worse as I scouted him more, but decently fast. They mentioned him. His coverage looks good. His block shed looks good. He's 21. 
I'm a little worried, I'll be honest, but I think that's probably the route we're going to go. We also do have this guy, Holcomb. That name Holcomb's a good name, too. He also looks pretty good, dude. Who would I bet on? EA's prospect, who actually looks good, or Holcomb? Um, I think we're going to go to 16 and hope for the best. I mean, we're just going to probably just take Charles, I think. I really wish we needed alignment because this guy looks absolutely insane. And yes, I know you get someone that looks that good, that clear cut. You should take him, but not in this case. I mean, we just have no use for him. I think I might actually go with Matthew Givens. Not that I think he's even that great, but we need a DT for the future. Is he 21? 22 is a little rough for a non-starter, but I'm going to grab him. Matthew Givens. I regret it, but it is what it is. Main reason for that is because there's two linebackers, and I kind of want the game to decide for me. What I'm hoping, though, is that it takes a little while for them to do that. You know, wait a couple of picks if you don't mind. The tight end, Steve Young, the GOAT. Holcomb goes. Green Bay doesn't need a coverage linebacker, so we are going to hop the charge of the Niners, who probably don't need one themselves, but let's not risk it. So you trade a six-round pick to move three spots up with the Packers, which even then you might even debate. Probably could have been a fifth round anyways. But regardless what you want to debate, the middle linebacker Richard Charles is ours. Please be good. And he's in development trade. I don't know what uh, Holcomb was like. Maybe they're both good. Maybe they're both hidden. But yeah, I mean, it was a little bit of a tougher choice than I would have thought. But luckily, we didn't have to make the choice. And in the end, it worked out. And maybe if Brewer is a little bit, you know, more proven in something, maybe I would take him. But I just, I mean, corner is not that huge of a need. And more importantly, He's just, I mean, him along with the rest of the guys we have scouted, they're just not great looking. The Falcons have been kind of decent and sim, but we're going to get a third and a fourth next year from them. I mean, there were some other teams that looked decent, but as far as like what makes the most sense, actually getting multiple picks for next year rather than, oh, well, we're the team that's projected to be top five pick. Take our pick straight up for 16. It's like, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. It's like, I don't care what your projection is. I really want to take this tight end. We don't need this many tight ends. <laughs> But the value is just so good. Screw it. I'm going to take him. I don't even care. Tavon Whitfield, welcome to the team. Normal development trade. I should have cared. I should not have done it. It was a stupid decision. I should have traded it down and uh, help. So we grabbed a couple of fourth rounds next year for some of our trade downs there. And, oh, the cornerback I had that had a little bit of potential might have actually been decent because the only guy left is the kicker, Eric Ford who obviously with elite kick power and B accuracy looks like a very good player. 97 kick power. Yeah, he's 23, but potential future starting kicker right here. Let's take a look at our overalls. I mean, how many guys did we actually get that are starters? I mean, Clemens probably out the gate is the starter, and Bellinger obviously has developed a little bit because he's, you know, that's kind of how it works. If you're a starter, even if you suck, you get overalls. But yeah, I mean, it just doesn't seem like... It's a tough decision at all. Matthew Clemens is just a freak. He has all the traits for catching. Of course, injury and toughness is dog crap, and it makes me insanely sad to see. But regardless, he's the new number one, wearing number 87. Bad injury, six foot six, monster. In, you know, like, oh, really? 87? He's really going to just copy Gronk's whole thing he's got going on? Of course, 72 overall for the DT. Would love to see what Gregory was like. And yeah, this guy is just not good for the future at all. But Richard Charles, very high overall, is easily the new number one middle linebacker. I'm feeling good about that. 69 overall zone coverage, I believe. With the dev of maybe superstar, question mark? What's his number? 24. I knew it was going to be something stupid. 42 is not great, but it's better than what they gave him. He is looking pretty small, ain't going to lie. What about 67 overall tight end, man? 85 speed, 87 excel. I mean, usable. He's got all the traits as well, but yeah, definitely doesn't matter for us. Also, wearing number 41. I'm sick of these damn fullback numbers on tight ends. Nothing will beat Sky more, like how disgusting that number choice is for a, a wide receiver, but oh my. This is, I mean, when this happens, it is pretty bad too. Let's go in. No, we got to give him some trash. 82 is not a great number. It's okay, but it's not, you know, not super elite. But I think we wanted to look at two players. We wanted to see the DT, Gregory, 76 overall. Was a need for us in the future, but also normal development trade. More of a block shedder. We're looking for a pure pass rusher to replace Leonard Williams, but would not have gotten that there. What else did we have? The, the outside linebacker. Where is he? 
Now let's take a look at Osborne. I know he was going to suck anyways. Oh, he's hidden. He was hidden, in fairness. The problem is, unless he's, like, literally X-Factor, he's not better than our guy. Well, actually, if he's Superstar, maybe. Because you can't actually, like, get Superstar without cheating. So if you're in a league where, you know, you're not going to allow that, I suppose technically it's the only way to get him. But Holcomb, 72 overall, normal dev. So we obviously, well... We most likely made the right call because obviously the dev up could be massive XP, but he is kind of like one of those weird outside linebacker hybrid, you know, like pass rusher guys because once again, EA doesn't have the proper terminology. So an outside linebacker is a pass rusher and uh, an inside linebacker is a coverage guy. That's that's how EA does it. All right, so we have the season three team. We bumped uh, Galladay's ratings up to an 86, which I think is fair the way he played and, you know, he's... Still pretty rough looking. He's a good catcher, but route running's really, really iffy. Of course, looking at Slayton, what is his ratings looking like? He's 84 overall with... He's a good deep route guy. He's okay in speed. Uh, Kadarius Tony, I think they didn't develop him as a, sl uh, like a smaller guy like he is. Kind of development as a medium to deep range. And I moved Wandale Robinson to running back with him being like one of the backup wide receivers as well. So... He should still play. Of course, that carrying sucks, but, like, he's just not playing right now without that. You know, there's no thing I can say to EA, like, hey, put him in as, like, the gadget guy. You know, they're just like, nope, you're number four wide receiver. You don't get to play, damn it. So, like, you know, it's, it's better than nothing, I guess. Uh, and then as far as defensively goes, a lot of uh, different colors, which is nice. You need some yellow and some, well, maybe just one blue, but at least it's no, you know, bronze starting, which is nice. And yeah, I mean, let's go into year three, a team that maybe can finally make the postseason and if not that, at least do some damage as we're, you know, getting a lot of guys that only just recently started playing their second seasons now. And of course, we don't need a quarterback, but this is very interesting because I don't think I've ever seen a quarterback prospect spotlight, so it's going to be kind of cool to see what the story is here, if he's actually anything to be, you know, noted uh, Sean Childers, obviously none of this matters because we don't know they're 40 or anything like that, but, uh, good to a lead, I don't know if that's all true, but, <laughs> that guy looks kind of freakly, what about, uh, I've literally already almost forgot his name, uh, Owen Mitchell, B and a D, and he doesn't look super great, but throw power is good to great, uh, I, you know, I, I, seeming like an L, I'm just gonna be honest with you, if that isn't the most cuck, style first sentence I've ever seen. I'm proud of my performance today, coach. But it wasn't better than Like, come on, man. We're having a very, very average season, but resigning is the main focus here, and I'm hoping we have a lot of money because there are some big names here starting, honestly, with Darnay Holmes, cornerback. Trying, oh, we have a lot of money. I, I expected us to, but at the same time, you just don't know. Of course, out of nowhere, uh, I guess he isn't actually as small as I thought. 5'10", 195 is... It's pretty prototypical. He's kind of came out of nowhere. So a five-year 70, I think, for him would just be insane. And I think it's a great value for us as well. So Dexter Lawrence, a guy that really hasn't played that well, but he's obviously an elite tier run stopper. I think he would probably be like a five-year 80, to be honest. You know, his numbers haven't been crazy great, but his overall and all that, it obviously reflects a contract similar to that. Uh, Leonard Williams, worse than I would have expected from him, to be honest. We'll see what we want to do there. A Dory, I really don't like an 85 man, 84 zone, 27 year old asking for a three year, but I mean, do we really have much of a choice? A three year 32 isn't terrible either, so we're going to just give it to him straight up. Same with Andrew Thomas, like we said, you know, a guy that's putting up, you know, he's giving up a lot of sacks. It really doesn't deserve anything crazy. A five year 70, I think, is fair. Of course, McKinney, another guy that's, you know, due for a contract worth the money i don't think he's done anything too spectacular either so a five-year 50 about 10 per uh and everyone else is pretty much gonna be a future free agent oh yeah we uh, forgot about this quarterback eddie skillen minus the s freaking just straight up yeah. if we win we have to be in if we lose i don't know and we don't have to worry about that because we won 10 and 7. I threw a couple of different playbooks in. We finished the last couple of weeks with the Patriots offense. So, you know, maybe that's something we look at in the future, of course. Not a terrible start. Then we started to win some games, and then we lost, and then we won. And it's just 
just a you know iffy season. But with this team not making the playoffs in some time, it's better than iffy. It's it's great actually. Of course, Najee Harris over two thousand yards with twenty eight touchdowns, maybe the greatest season ever for a running back. Probably C.J. Stroud fifty four, not fifty four, forty five hundred yards. I wish it was fifty four. 42 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, easily his best year so far. Uh, Saquon Barkley, really good numbers. Four, uh, you know, 15-19, 4.9 per with 11 touchdowns. Receiving Kadarius Toney. And we threw a bunch of different schemes in, and it just, things got kind of wild. He became the number one wide receiver, apparently. But Kenny Galladay, 11-60 with eight touchdowns. Slayton, this is a huge step back for him. And then Clemens, not a bad year for a rookie tight end. Of course, offensive line-wise, Andrew Thomas getting that five-year 70 to just give up sacks. Evan Neal, nine sacks per. Kind of wish he would go back to his rookie year, but fair enough. Two guys with 100-plus tackles. Sack totals, Thibodeau, 13. Ten and a half for Ojulari. Seven for the run stopper, Lawrence. Three and a half for Williams. Pick totals, Adoree Jackson with a four after the three-year contract. Graham Gano his best year yet as he needs a contract. Slippery little fella. Gillen, another really good punting season. Absolutely been worth it. The four-year 10 probably should get a pay raise, to be honest. But MVP, it's got to be Najee. Yep, it's Najee Harris with us at number five. Not terrible, actually. Looking at the Offensive Player of the Year, number three, that's got to be good enough for, uh, I would imagine, a uh, Pro Bowl appearance. Richard Charles with the Defensive Rookie of the Year award. Number two for quarterback, Lamar Jackson being a Seattle Seahawk. Okay. (laughs) Running backs, number six. Wide receiver number eight, O line number five and ten, uh, defensive line number nine. I thought it would have been a little bit higher to be honest. Linebacker not on the list, DB number four, kicker number nine. So I mean, we added some names to the list. We got an award. I mean, it was definitely a positive season. It ended up being a better season than I could have imagined. Uh, well, maybe not, but. Statistically, it was pretty damn good. Don't see Brady, but maybe he's there somewhere. We're 98, uh, 90 overall to their 89 overall. Obviously, there's a lot of morale in there, but still, the overall stand. I don't care what it says, and I did see Brady there last second. Chicago moving on to the division around. Let's see if we can, quote-unquote, join them, because obviously we don't know if we're going to play them. Probably uh, not, right, as we're going to end up facing whatever the top-tier seed is. 7-0, 14-0. 3-14, to 14, right before half that touchdown may be impossible to come back from, but 21-3, to 21-10. Okay, I mean, the offense put up some points, just, once again, too little too late, and you just can't take that long to get going, and, I mean, I know there's no chance, but I still kind of want to just come in, more importantly, just to, like, actually play, rather than just, you know, try to win, like, this, the chances of winning are literally negative. Went with a run commit last second, and that is an amazing individual effort by whoever the cornerback was. Maybe Darnell Holmes, Darnay Holmes, anyways. I cannot believe I should have called that timeout. I cannot believe someone almost helped him there, and uh, we're gonna try to block it. I'm not saying it's our only chance, but it would be a huge chance if we were to block it and take it to the house, but. Instead, we're going to be down by 14 with like 30 seconds left to go in a timeout. Honestly, if you believe in Kenny Galladay, though, you kind of maybe do argue that that timeout's just as good to save as it is to use. Of course, you need a miracle, so you obviously kick return. And that did not work. You know when you be like, stay in the back of the end zone. You got to keep it safe. It's like, nah, dude. We're not playing that game today. The tight end's pretty open. Well, maybe not. (laughs) Could jump on that route, I guess. I love All Madden. It's so good. It's great. I love All Madden. It's awesome. Of course, Slayton on that C route. (laughs) Already ready for it. Screw it, dude. Nothing to lose. And it's just slightly overthrown. Obviously, a little bit of pressure, but got to give it to uh, Kadarius Tony. Kind of getting out there. Of course, Kenny Galladay in the slot is a little bit of an interesting one. Darius Slayton, maybe. I mean, at this rate, I just want a damn completion. <laughs> oh, man. What a, what a what was even the point here? Like, what are we doing here? The game is shaking again. I mean, you got to take that. That's kind of busted. The play broke. Kadarius scores. Fair enough. 
He slips off. Wait, what's... I got vibes that the game was over. Like, they weren't going to give us our chance. What is happening? Honestly. So, like, can we please have help? Thank you. Six seconds left. Can we at least get a shot? I'm just saying. Like, does anyone, you know? The power of the mullet? The power of the mullet? The power of the damn mullet! Come on! Oh, come on. Pop him. And we don't hit him. Well, we got, kind of got to hit, but we lose by seven. Obviously, it's a little, yeah, maybe maybe more than that, but it is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with Tom Brady still at the helm. It's a very good team, and honestly, good debate. Considering the names we've seen in free agency, maybe even still a top three team in the game. Uh, but, of course, Stroud outperformed Brady technically. That's harmful to the environment that we didn't do better. Wondell Robinson, a glitch at running back, only goes for 4.3 yards per carry. Barkley was kind of bad. Fournette outplayed Barkley, which is just a love to see it. Receiving Kenny Galladay, 11 for 123 with a touchdown. Uh, any other like kind of crazy numbers? Kadarius doesn't really count. He kind of got that from us. Sack totals, nothing. Picks, nothing. Kicking, pretty tame. I mean, we just we just kind of got outscored, and they won. There's, you know, I mean, sometimes that's not the worst thing in the world, right? But let's jump ahead of the Super Bowl. It's going to be the Buccaneers. Every time we lose to a team early, it's that team. It's not. We lost to the Bears earlier in the season. I was like, really? The Bears of all teams to lose to? But I guess it makes sense. And the Bears are going to win the Super Bowl. I mean, who is their quarterback? Is it just Fields? There's no way it's just Fields, right? Surely they went with someone else for them to be doing well. It's Fields. Look at him go. The guy's done it. He's won a Super Bowl. All right, if you will, with that receiving group too. Okay, it's impressive. But let's take a look at whatever kind of dev ups we would have had. Probably X Factor for the quarterback. Maybe Superstar for Kadarius. No, Stroud didn't go up in dev either. But on the defensive side, we had Adori go up, who is an 87 overall now, which is massively clutch after the three year deal. And then you also have Jack Campbell, who went up to an X Factor, which is, I mean, it's nice. It's not like a necessity, but it's obviously an amazing thing to have. Okay, this team's looking good. It, this feels like a team that we've been rebuilding for like five seasons now, but we're only entering year four, so I think we're easily on par for a good run this season, and if not the win, maybe a year five Super Bowl. All right, here we are in free agency. We re-signed Leonard Williams to a one-year 12. He's still looking pretty good. I think in like 88 block shed, 86 finesse, 30 years of age. He's still good enough to start, obviously. Uh, looking at free agency, though, a lot of DBs and a lot of left tackles. Unfortunately, positions we don't really need. Left tackle, tackle in general, is very solid here. Cornerback is good enough. I mean, adding a guy like Shaquille Griffin, you're basically just adding another Adoree Jackson to the game. I mean, there's a, you know, to the team, there's really no point in doing that, right? Like, he's he's faster, but he's not really, like, better pass rusher. We just don't need one. Coverage linebacker could help, but we just don't really have a position for them to start at the moment anyways. Cameron Curl looks great. Don't have a starting spot for the safety. So, realistically, you know, it's just kicker. Honestly, we just need a kicker and... And just to look towards the future, like wide receiver perhaps. But Kadarius Tony could play number two if he absolutely had to. I wouldn't see that for him in real life. But in game, you know, not a terrible player. I still just don't understand. And don't worry about that. <laughs> the the Wandale Robinson pick, man. I just don't get it. Like, if they would have traded uh, Kadarius Tony, sure. I don't know. Maybe they had something that just fell through. I'm not 100% sure. But I just don't get it. If you draft him in the third or the fourth you know, mid third or something or fourth, high fourth. Sure. It doesn't matter, but I don't know, dude. I don't know. But young way obviously joins on a two year 10, which is a good uh, contract for him. It's an okay contract for us. And then, like I said, looking at what we need, maybe wide receiver as even though I think we should be boosting Kenny Galladay's overall because he's playing well. And you know, un unless we're thinking guys like Devonte and Hopkins are just going to suck soon. 30 isn't the end of all days. It's not pretty for a wide receiver, but it shouldn't be 84 overall if you're putting up like 1,000 yards. And I don't know. I'm just going to just gonna draft a wide receiver, maybe even trade Kenny Galladay off. As, uh, the way he played, he should be worth like a late second, honestly. But yeah, let's just go to the draft and, uh, you know, let's not talk about it. Well, I guess do our focus players first.
All right, so fifth year options. Kadarius Tony needs the option. I don't know. It's kind of a weird player to do that for. I'd rather just say no and just give him a long term deal. I know it's kind of like dumb, but that's you know I, I've seen a couple people saying that I'm paying too much for players, but the fact that choosing no to the fifth year option in Madden is considered the cheapest option kind of proves the point, right? That the contracts are a little too low. Let's enter the draft. A couple of positions that we're going to be looking to replace. Uh, like we said, the wide receiver position is probably number one. Speaking of number one, the Lions with a quarterback. I'd imagine that they would have probably taken one by now, but I guess not. Wow, there's a lot of quarterbacks going. I think there was like five quarterbacks in the first ten picks, which is quite nuts. I'm getting a little nervous because our guy's a one to two. He could go literally any point here. Please not the rivals. Oh, they did take wide receiver, too. I think that guy was a little bit of a smaller choice. You know, Philadelphia seemingly likes those smaller wide receivers. But our choice, Mr. Jowers. Not that he looks absolutely nuts. He, he kind of looks like a little bit of a project. But 6'4", 4'2", four, four, you know, 4'4", four, four, gives us basically a younger Galladay. Maybe a little bit faster. So, uh, suffers concentration drops of weight. I'm a little worried about some of this. Wants to take every catch to the house. No to attract flags. Avoids big hits, falling catches, great. So it, the concentration drop sucks, but like everything else is great. So let's grab him and we get a hidden player who is massively more athletic than I thought. 92 speed, 92 excel, 92 a change of direction is crazy with 94 jumping. I honestly don't even remember looking at his vertical, but probably should have since he's a jump ball guy, but... Okay, that's a good pick. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that we should probably move on from Galladay. And I didn't mean to run, but I did it. Uh, did we get more on the DT? We did Nelson Davis. I mean, that's pretty good, dude. And I want more of a pass rushing DT than a, you know, a block shedder. But I think before I do anything, I probably should look at... Our backup DT, I don't remember what that rookie looked like, and he's not starting this year either. So Givens will be 24 by the time he actually starts. He has 70, yeah, I don't, I mean, when did we take this guy? Because we might be able to trade him off for a third round pick to a team that actually can start him. If we got like a medium, like a mid third for him, that would be, you know, it'd be okay. There's no way the two players I wanted the most go right before we could trade to the Titans who need a wide receiver. There's no way that DT, who obviously was worth it, and then the cornerback that looked really good. This was like the secondary corner. I mean, there's honestly no point in trading up anymore. That's really unfortunate, to be honest, but what can you do? It happens. One pick before us. You've got to be joking. You know, I couldn't just trade a wide receiver to a team that didn't need one. You know, I had to wait for a team that actually needed one to show up. But late in the second, looking for uh, some sort of future player, I suppose, because I don't know if we really need any actual starters right now. Could come down to a center, Colin Sawyer. A little bit on the weaker side, but he is very talented with his te you know, his actual techniques. Uh, we also do have Saunders here, who is uh, a bit stronger. I mean, I don't know if we necessarily need... I mean, do, do we need any of these players? I don't know. I mean, where would you slide a, a lineman into this lineup? You know, like, if we didn't have a Jenkins, maybe. But Jenkins is a great player, so obviously, you know, I'm not going to be mad about, you know, having him. But what do you do with this lineup? I mean, you need a DT. We lost out on one. But once again, I couldn't do anything about it. Cornerback, just, I mean, the cornerbacks that were there are gone now. I think it's a trade done. The Texans are offering me a next year second. I'm taking it. I know in real life you probably don't do that, but I think it's a little safer in-game to be trading with a team like the Texans. I mean, even in real life you may be debated just if you have really nothing there. But once again, it's not common to have a team built the way our team is built. We traded Kenny Galladay and a fifth next year for the Jets' high third. Which with this pick, we are likely going to be future-proofing the linebacker spot. I don't know who we want more, though. Townsend, who had a, a C block, she had a 4-5-6... Really good jumping. It seems very good in the Excel and Agility drills. And then you have Radley, who I know nothing about. Seems slightly more athletic, but with worse jumping. A power move. I really don't know who to bet on here. Maybe we jumped the gun a little bit too early on the trade-up. 
Uh, always looks for a massive hit. Struggles to find the ball in the air. Motor is always running hot. Often looks to typically avoids. Always looking for the massive hit is a cool thing, but I'd imagine every player is like that. Struggles to find the ball in the air. Often looks to rip the ball. Known to attract flags. Attract flags actually was not what I thought it was for wide receiver. When I thought it attracts flags, I thought it meant like, you know, they have the PI, the guy. But Townsend's slightly better, I guess. Normal development rate, though. 89 speed, 88 excel. If his jumping was 79, the other guy's jumping must have been like 71 or something ridiculously bad, right? Of course, we still have more picks. Pick 18 in the third, pick 21 in the third. We have a couple of day threes that might be worth grabbing. Larry Heck, uh, very athletic, but as far as you know, pure talent goes, does look pretty bad. If we actually needed a starter, maybe you take the risk. We don't really need a starter. Roman Andrews, a power move. I think I'm going to take the risk just for future proofing again. Roman Andrews is the guy. Normal development rate, 90 strength in that power move. Hopefully goes off. And we're going to take a risk on Mr. Marshawn Turner, whose speed is solid. Worries me a little bit, but we're going to grab him. Normal development rate, 90 speed, 92 excel, 90 agility, 90 change of direction, 89 jumping. That's prototypical corner two position. Obviously, he would never start this year, but I mean, for a late third, might not be the worst. We'll see. Obviously, he could be the worst player in the world, and the fact that he isn't an athletic freak, he's just fast enough, means you know he's not really guaranteed anything. But what about Donovan Brown? A deep route. He's a day three. Screw it. Donovan Brown it is. Normal development rate, 93 speed, 95 excel, 91 agility with 81 change of direction at 5'10", 181. That's literally like just the most counterproductive, contradicting thing I've ever seen. We have a lot of draft picks. I'm going to start trading off. Maybe this is how it happens. We're trading multiple fourth round picks to the Raiders for a third round next year, which means we're going to have two... He went that high? That Will Young guy went all the way up there when he was undrafted projected. Holy crap, dude. Well, I mean, that kind of like ruins my plans. I mean, I don't know how good he was going to be anyways, but had DT potential for a left end, which is not a super common thing. Wow, that sucks. We're going to go with Marquise Cooks just because he's got cornerback potential. 90 speed, 90 excel, 90 agility. Jumping and change of direction is awful, but he did have a C-man coverage, so maybe got some value there in the fifth. I'm not sure, but it's always nice to have depth in the defensive back spot, safety or corner. doesn't really matter. You can never go wrong with a uh, strong-legged punter in the seventh, so Brett Morgan joining the team with 95 kick power and hidden development trade. 24 years of age sucks, but it's a punter, kicker. I don't really care too much about the age of those guys. Even fullback, I care more about them being younger than kicker punter, but still, hidden development rate's great. 73 overall for the rookie wide receiver, 74 for the middle linebacker, even though he's normal dev, 70 for the power move DT, 71 for the cornerback, 70 for the wide receiver with no change of direction, 64 for the safety slash corner, and then Brett Morgan's a 72 overall. Not sure why I care. Ooh, he's pretty good. I don't even remember if we needed a punter. I just see great kick power and... I see great responsibilities, but obviously, I'm just interested in the dev, even though I know it's going to be star. Like, there's no, yeah, you know, it's like, I mean, what else? What, what else would you expect? Uh, Jowers. I'm not really sure where I play him because at number two, he obviously is where, you know, that's where he fits. But do you start a 70 something overall wide receiver to play at number two just because he's bigger than Kadarius? Probably, but. I don't want people mad at me. Hidden development trait is star as expected. I kind of like number 15. Some Brandon Marshall vibes. I don't even remember if he wore 15 for them. I think he did. But the one thing I'll say is I hope he doesn't have Brandon Marshall. Ooh, nice power move. But hope he doesn't have Brandon Marshall playing vibes. Not a, if I remember correctly, not a very productive season for him with the Giants. 71 man coverage, 61 zone, 73 catch. I mean, he's actually all right. He's actually all right. Uh, the wide receiver, 70 overall. Doesn't really matter. Once again, he's a backup that at this point in the rebuild probably won't see the light of day other than kick return, which, once again, 93 kick return. Not bad. Uh, I guess we'll take a look at the safety, and then I want to take a look at the two players I missed out on. So they have the safety looking really bad, but 59 catching you can get away with. Block shit of 52 is pretty dog crap. But man and zone isn't terrible. Pursuit's okay. I mean, this is a guy that... 
you can maybe get away with if you start him right away and you got a breakout, but yeah, that's not really the game we're in today. Want to see the two players that we missed out on slightly, like literally right next to us. What was it, 28? Yeah, it was like 27, 28. So Clinton, 77 overall. Normal dead, but 6'3", 95 speed, 95 excel, an absolute freak of nature. And then the DT, Nelson Davis, who of course was hidden development trade. 80 block shed, 79 power move, very athletic, great strength. Don't know what his dev actually is, but if it's anything higher than star, I'm going to be pissed. Please. Thank you. We'll take it. We'll we'll deal with it. Got a little bit of depth. We got a technical starter this season with Jowers, and we also added quite a bit to next year's draft. So productive, I suppose. Productive. Didn't really do much in the free agency. So productive, but not very right now productive. So we have some signings. These are uh, some very good players, some very young players that are going to be kind of costly. Ten and a half sacks last season, eight before then, six before then, nine so far this year, and we're only halfway through. My man's is going to be getting paid. I'm just going to be honest with you. He, he's going to get paid. Like, uh, what is this? That's not even 20 per. He's probably worth at least this. Nearly 20 per. Top tier in the league. I mean, you could even argue higher than that. Kadarius Tony. I don't know. He's, once again, kind of a gadget player. We're trying to build him up to be the pure slot guy. Uh, he's not really playing that well this year. Was amazing last year. Not really playing that well this year. And he's not really playing a reduced role. He's playing pretty much the exact same role. So, I mean, I guess a five-year 60 just to be that gadget slot type guy. Wandale Robinson, he really hasn't been great as a running back. I know his overall is high because all wide receivers playing running back are high, but 4.0 yards per carry is just good enough. I mean, a four-year 15, that overall is really high. It's going to be like the first time we've signed someone for really low based on their overall, but Jayon Brown, a guy that I actually thought would have been here till 30 without needing a contract, I don't know because that's a really cheap deal, especially for a quote-unquote outside linebacker. I think at worst case, that's good backup money. You know, if we decide to replace him with the rookie we took, even then, five mil for a backup with his talent is really good. Uh, uh, Cordell Flott, who I thought was Cardale, but maybe it's not. Not a guy we need, unfortunately. 78 overall, decent man. Like we said, undersized, but he's not a terrible player. What is the deal? A three-year 8.7. I mean, that's cheap for a backup. Three or nine, pretty much, for a guy that hasn't played but still has potential. Bellinger, unfortunately, you know, he had a chance to start. Didn't do super great in his first two years. Uh, this man, he's, once again, pretty cheap deals here. So, if two year five just for another good backup. This guy is just a backup, but he has high throw power, and everyone else is pretty much replaced. We won 52 to seven, and we couldn't get our superstar dev up for the tight end. So, we had a really, really good season this year, and it even led to being the bi-week team in the NFC, the number one seed. Of course, the thing that's kind of strange about it, though, is I looked at some of the stats, and we're not really performing that well on offense, really relying heavily, wow, 0-41, to relying heavily on Saquon Barkley, but as far as the quarterbacks and receivers go, not really utilizing them that much. And you see here, CJ Shroud, 4,000 yards, 28 touchdowns, 11 picks, really not that impressive uh, but Saquon, 23 touchdowns, 1,660 yards. Of course, a lot of touchdowns for Wandale Robinson. You could also argue that, you know, the yards weren't terrible from Stroud. And obviously, with all those rushing touchdowns, you even throw him a third of those, and it puts him, you know, what, about 40? Pretty close to 40 anyways. Uh, but receivers, Jowers was the number one receiver behind or ahead of Slayton, even though he was the number two uh, Matthew Clemens, 888 for yards with nine touchdowns. A really good year for him. Kadarius, not bad. So very spread around offense. Lineman, uh, six for Neal allowed, nine for Thomas. We were just more efficient, I think. And of course, probably should have paid Aziz uh, a little bit more. I told you he was going to have a great year. I mean, absolutely just dominated. I think we were nine games in when he had nine. So he actually even produced, outproduced what he was doing at that time. Uh, but still, a five-year, what, 93 is still amazing money. Uh, Thibodeau with 12.5 might be his best season yet. Jack Campbell, 5.5 is a blitzer. What about the tackles in general? Jack Campbell, the only guy. So, 
I mean, just we were just so efficient on offense. It just seemed like the defense, you know, kind of was able to chill as well. Uh, Rory Jackson, five picks, maybe goes to X Factor. Young Hui Koo, much, much better than Gano. Only missed one kick and then was blocked. Of course, same with the extra points, it seems. Uh, well, he missed two, but one was blocked. Uh, but yeah, a lot of special teamers we have on the team. Gillen, uh, 51.4, seems like, like I said, 37 punts. Seems pretty low, right? So I think we're just a really efficient team. We got the job done that way, and we're the number one team because of it. As far as uh, MVP and all that goes, I don't think we would have won that. But maybe best running back, perhaps, as Saquon was great. Jowers with uh, Rookie of the Year, which is amazing. Number two, Saquon Barkley. Uh, wide receiver, no one to be found. O-line, number two, number three, number nine, and number ten. Really good O-line now. Aziz at number two behind Aaron Donald. It's a tough guy to beat. Seven for Thibodeau. Linebackers, not on the list. DBs, number one, Adoree Jackson. That's a really good season. And then kicking was at number five. So a very, very good season. Even though the numbers didn't absolutely light it up, we still did enough to get to the playoffs. And on top of that, be the number one seed, like we said. And we're facing against the Cardinals, uh, the, the Cardinals, the Panthers, who, I mean, they're okay. They have a lot of potential. They're kind of living up to that potential a little bit finally. But I still think we're a much better team. This is also kind of the year to do it as the Broncos beat the Chiefs. Not that the Broncos are the easiest team in the world to beat, but if you're talking about who you'd rather play, you'd much rather play the Broncos. I'll tell you what, they're a little less electrifying, if you will. 13-3 to now, start of the second half. Not really looking great as they get a huge touchdown rushing for, I would assume, McCaffrey. 20-13, to the Panthers have all the chances in the world. They will not take their opportunity, though, and we will win 27-20. So a pretty consistent game through, just, you know, not in their favor, I guess. We just kind of held on. Obviously, Stroud not super great here uh, running. Saquon was really good as McCaffrey had a huge rush, and obviously Barkley didn't. So Barkley was technically a lot better. Wondell Robinson stealing all the touchdowns. Really good, though. 12 for 57 with 4.7 yards per carry. It's kind of the first time in a long time we've had a, a team kind of do it on the ground, even though they technically don't need to. So if it comes down to us getting stopped a lot uh, in the ground game, I mean, I would love to see the pass game take over. Really good pass rushing again. Aziz kind of stealing the show here a little bit. Flot, who got that three-year nine getting a pick as well not bad i mean aziz is super stealing shot i don't know why i said kinda he's absolutely stealing it thibodeau is just you know good but as far as you know comparing the two goes it's not even close like right now aziz is just killing it of course he's already a good finesse guy but i went with power move for the chance at block shed and power move want to get uh you know both of those things going darnay holmes obviously his zone coverage is going to suck because he's a man corner here for us and yeah, I mean, that's a good upgrade. Look at that man coverage. Freakly. Bellinger with a speed upgrade, which is always nice to see, even though he's going to be gone next year anyways. Kick power for the strong-legged kicker. That's kind of juiced. But here we are going against who in the championship? Cowboys? The Washington football team. I mean, I'm not saying we deserve to make the, the Super Bowl, but this is like... Some Tom Brady, New England Patriots level of luck to get these kind of opponents to head to the Super Bowl. Like, this is actually kind of wild. 0-0, zero zero, we start off with three points. They got the ball first, so we should get it at halftime. They get three to tie it up. I mean, realistically here, their offense is really just asking for us to win. But can our offense deliver? As you can see, we've been a bit of a struggle, some folks ourselves. Obviously, 21-13. to 13, and we're going to hold on. I mean, their offense just has never really developed, unfortunately. Davis Youngblood, I thought, was like a random free agent. Maybe not. Maybe that actually, no, that was one of the guys. They were one of the teams that took a run on quarterbacks. Stroud, Stroud just not really great. He's really not doing well for us. Of course, the run game, just carrying hard. Wandale was awful, but Barkley was just good enough. Of course, looking at the receivers, Slayton was great. They had a lot of top-tier receivers. It really was just Slayton carrying the... The bunch there, obviously, we had some rushing numbers as well. Sack totals, uh, we had nothing. Darnay Holmes with a pick, though, which probably played a huge factor. Is it was all about the defense holding them. But regardless, the New York Giants are in the Super Bowl. I should have before I I'm gonna, I want to see, like, I always like to see who our opponents have to play because, obviously, we had some pretty easy opponents here as it's the Patriots in the Super Bowl. What are the chances? Honestly, like, I never see the Patriots in the Super Bowl, but when we're doing a Giants rebuild, of course it's the Patriots. Why wouldn't it be? 
Unbelievable. So the Patriots had to beat the Steelers. Not the easiest team in the world to face. Then they had to beat the Jets. Okay, that's like we were talking about that time. Right? <laughs> Very easy in comparison. And then Denver, not the toughest team to face against. But also not the easiest either. Mac Jones playing pretty perfectly. How many yards is that? Damian Harris doing well. I mean, I just don't really know what their wide receivers look like. Of course, Drake London, who just wouldn't technically be a, fa uh, a Patriot. And because of the contract Drake London was asking for, which was kind of cheap, like, do we not pull him off the team? Like, it's just kind of, like, dumb that, like, like, I can't adjust everything every rebuild. It would just take so many hours of prep for every single rebuild. But, like, at the same time, he shouldn't be there. He just simply shouldn't be. You know? Like, it's just, why is Drake London there? And he's literally one of their top receivers, you know? Like, why would you let this guy go if you're the Falcons? Like, who do the Falcons have at wide receiver right now? Like, probably nobody. Brian Edwards, who actually does pretty well in Sim a lot. Odell, and then they had to draft another guy. You know? It's just like, I don't see why, but at the same time, they do have good receivers. Regardless, take a look at our dev ups. Take a look at our matchup, as it could be the end of the rebuild. Looking at those dev ups. Saquon, finally, my boy. Back to Superstar somehow gets evasive in bat is this not what he actually has is that i thought that's what he actually has in the normal like game uh no one else really deserved a dev up so it doesn't surprise me there uh defensively aziz should have been an x factor but i'm not gonna force it because eh, it's superstar you know robert quinn in the game i don't even know if he's star and he had a season like he just had uh in real life so it is what it is but the giants and the patriots can the patriots finally get their revenge despite Tom Brady not being here. Patriots fans are probably like, please, he's been gone for a couple of years now. Stop bringing it up. 7-3, though. 6-7. to seven. It's a very close game. 14-6. to six. Huge touchdown before half for them. We get the field goal before half, which was not bad. They're now down, uh, up by three. It's tied up. 20 all. Come on, offense. I hate this. Nice, up by seven. Stop them, and the Giants do it again. The Patriots have their kryptonite, and that kryptonite's going to win three on them. At least in recent history. I don't know about all time, you know, whatever the hell the damn numbers are. But unbelievable as the Giants of football are once again the Giants of football. Obviously, for some reason, these uniforms are glitched. Kind of making me worried about potentially choosing them as a franchise team next Madden. I don't know who the hell I want, but I was kind of thinking about doing this team in you know, Madden this year. But obviously, before the season went, they had a lot of uh, young, great talent with some decent devs. Now, though, obviously, Galladay is probably going to be a lot worse. Daniel Jones is a little bit less developable at his age. Uh, you know, it's potentially a team that, you know, is a top of my list again. Uh, but... Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, it's really just what the ratings look like when the game comes out. But regardless of that point, in this realm, we have a Super Bowl victory. Once again, Stroud, this game at least was pretty decent, but just kind of a game manager, man. We're just, we're just asking the ground game to carry the load, and we're just asking for one decent, wow, Slayton, again. Let's ask it for one decent drive, you know, if we need it. Quarterback just needs to carry, and I mean, he can do it from time to time. Dory Jackson with a pick. It's just the most team effort Super Bowl win you can ask for in a rebuild. I mean, it's just usually it's one or the other, but this is it's just a full team stretch to win the Super Bowl, of course. Uh, I'll show you guys, you know, we didn't like redo the Super Bowl or anything like that. Ironically enough, I did run the Patriots playbook for this season, and it turned out pretty good. I mean, obviously, it's not the flashiest playbook in the world, but. It was able to get us to where we needed to go. I wanted a playbook that was going to run the ball, that was going to try to hit the tight end because we had a decent one, try to hit the bigger receivers. And ultimately, I mean, it got the job done. So, I mean, we're trying to win a Super Bowl with every playbook. We're getting there. CJ Stroud, very accurate across the board, super fast. Throw power, I don't think, went up a single point. Saquon Barkley, obviously a freak in the game. The fact that he isn't superstar in the game anymore and he's star dev makes him like a freak in for fantasy drafts but obviously that injury is becoming a problem and the bye week change that they made where you don't actually get injury upgrades and it's just like bullcrap kind of makes it tougher for him to be grabbed but 
So good. I mean, just so good. You definitely want to upgrade that truck in a little bit if you can, though. Slayton ended up becoming the number one wide receiver here. Feel sorry for Galladay because he's gone as we win a Super Bowl, but very good deep rock guy. Okay, medium, insane release. Very weird build, I'll say it. You know, catching's kind of weird. It's you know, it's just a weird build. Kadarius Tony, of course, also a medium to deep route guy. Wanted him to be a short guy, but look at that. 95 catching with 83 catching traffic. I mean, I don't know how that makes any sense. Like, what is what does catching do that catching traffic doesn't? You know, I don't understand. Maybe that's the next experiment I do, actually, because I really don't get it. Even, you know, Jowers, you know, it's just like it's the same as agility and change direction. What does that do? You know what I mean? Like, uh, why do I care about agility if it's change direction that matters? Is agility for juke moves? Like, how does catching matter when it's catching traffic that matters? Like, if you're wide open, if you have 70-plus catching, you should catch the ball, right? So I don't, I really don't understand what this is. I feel like it's going to be something that they're going to change in the future. Also, this man looks like freaking Beetlejuice, dude. His head is tiny compared to his body, but... Also, a freak. Look how good he is. Super fast. Good route runner. Evan Neal, 94 overall. How do they make him? Oh, a power blocker for sure. Finesse is lacking, but he is a tank. They actually run you over. Matthew Jones ended up becoming an 88 overall. Uh, finesse blocker. Maybe have to move those two, switch their positions or something. Will Putnam, uh, another finesse guy. Doesn't seem to really matter. Uh, Elton Jenkins, obviously, kind of a do-it-all, but... A little bit better in the, the finesse as well. Actually, he's kind of like balanced. Just a really good pass blocker. And then Andrew Thomas, who is also a power guy. So you come in with your fast guys on the edge and all that. You're you're crushing us. Of course, other players. Uh, Mr. Charles, the guy that we believed in from EA's prospect thing. And obviously turned out to be a very solid player for us. And still so many years left to go. Jack Campbell became an absolute beast. 90 block shed. 82 zone coverage, 68 man. I mean, he's just a freak. He's actually insane. Jayon doesn't matter. Julian Love, super under the radar on this one, but 97 zone. 97 zone coverage for Julian Love. That's just crazy. Like, I don't think McKinney's even going to be close to that. 90. Yeah, 90's great and all, but he had a huge head start compared to... Uh, Julian Love, obviously, for developing. Adoree Jackson, obviously, is going to regress a little bit, but he's able to turn it around. 90 man coverage, 84 zone. You know, we could have easily given up on him, but we decided to give him another shot, and it worked out tenfold. Darnay Holmes definitely needs to work on the zone coverage, but a super shocker sleeper player for this uh, rebuild. Thibodeau, obviously, we've seen him just a little bit ago, but super talented. Did all right. Let's Let's actually see what his numbers were. I can't really remember. I think he had a couple of 10 sack plus seasons. Yeah, 13 last year, or the year before. This year, 12 and a half, nine a year before that, and seven in his rookie year. I think that's all very realistic, actually. That's that's very realistic progression, to be honest, which is uh, pretty funny. Uh, Dexter Lawrence, absolute god tier block shedder. I'm trying to get that power move up, but super smart, super strong, super powerful. Uh, just good player, Leonard Williams. Not bad, maybe even gets himself another chance, depending on. You know, how hard he regresses. And then Ajijo Yulari with, uh, you know, 94 finesse. Like I said, technically the worst player compared to Thibodeau, but at the same time, outperformed him. Looking at the numbers, you know, 6, not super great. 8, not super great. 10.5, okay. And then 18 in this last season. It obviously just killed it in the postseason all the way through. But regardless, that's going to be the New York Football Giants rebuild. On Madden 22, obviously, we'll have to see what the ratings are like in next Madden. Because, like I said, with the start of this year, I was thinking they were like my prime target football team to use for franchise. But even now, I'm thinking, you know, the the big thing for me in a re, you know a franchise choice is I don't want a team with too good of weapons. But at this point, it's really hard to find that because even. You know, the Falcons, you wait a year and Calvin Ridley might be back. I'd probably, if I was going to do a Falcons franchise, I'd probably just end it for Calvin Ridley. I just don't see him. Like, I don't know how you come back unless they reduce his suspension. How you come back from missing so much, you know? And, like, then you become a problem in the locker room potentially because it's just like you come back expecting to be the number one, but Drake London and Pitts are there. You know, it's just so weird. 
I don't know. I would probably expect him to be gone, and then you're, you're kind of thinking, okay, maybe a team that's decent, but you have Pitts still. It's just like the ultimate mismatch in the game. I don't know. Giants are fun. I mean, we'll see. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed, maybe leave a like. Maybe subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Twitter, Jumpy Care. Second channel, PK Plays for non-Madden stuff. Anyways, if you guys have a team you'd like to see next, you know, I'm thinking about the Titans. There might be another team that I'm thinking of. Forgetting, I'm not sure. I was thinking about the Chargers as kind of like a quicker, shorter one, but at the same time, did they really add that much since adding Khalil Mack? Because we've done a Khalil Mack one. I, I don't know. But if there's a team that I'm forgetting, let me know in the comment section below. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys come back for the next video. But until next video, which I, I don't know if it'll be tomorrow, but for sure Tuesday. See ya!